just completed day two's admin of code challenge using SQL. So I wanted to explain my solution. Uh, day two's challenge is about taking these submarine directions and calculating a final position. So uh, part one is about uh, basically accumulating your x, y position using these movements. So forward five would put you at x5, forward eight down here would put you at x13. Down five would put you at y5, up three would now put you at y equals two because you're going up in a submarine. Uh, and then given a whole list of these, what's your final x, y position, multiply it together uh, in order to get your answer for the problem. So let's take a look at my answer for part one first. Um, so what I do is similar to day one, create a dedicated schema for this. Um, I then use an enum in order to uh, sort of capture the directions that are possible. And then I use that enum as the column for our input. Uh, by doing so, uh, it won't allow invalid inputs here. Um, and that's just a nice property. So again, for the inputs, I have an ID. So I could have an uh, ordering by uh, insertion order. And then I have the direction, which is never null. I have a value, which is the integer uh, movement. Uh, and then uh, again, just for fun, I put this check here, which it should always be positive. I then use the copy function to copy uh, the inputs uh, from a text file into the inputs table, into the direction and value column. And this time I have a multiple columns. So I specify the delimiter as space because I think the default is like comma or tab or something. Um, so just looking at what that looks like with the sample input, that's able to take the sample input that I, that I download directly from the problem set and ingest it directly into this table. So once we have the inputs in the table, it's time to start figuring out the solution, uh, which is right here, uh, down here, but I will work through the solution uh, live in the console. Okay, so here's our sample data brought into the SQL table. Um, we have the direction and the value, and we wanna figure out the final x, y. Uh, first thing I noticed was that x is really simple, your horizontal is really simple, because it's just the sum of all forward directions since there's no backward. Uh, down and up is a little trickier, mainly because up isn't negative already. And so if it was negative, we could just sum that as well to figure out your final y. Um, but since up isn't negative, it's a little bit harder. Um, I wanted to try to solve this in a single SQL query. Otherwise, it would be an easy update, you know, da da dot where um, direction equals up. You know, you could update it to be negative and then do a sum. But I wanted to try to solve all of this in a single SQL query, um, potentially using subqueries and common table expressions for just a single statement. Uh, so this um, is a little trickier. So uh, the first thing I thought of doing was uh, just summing all of the values for each direction, because the, the thing I noticed is that it doesn't really matter what order any of these directions happen in, because if you sum them in the right way, the summing is, uh, you could just do that in any order. So um, First thing I did was sort of do a uh, window function, which I showed in day one over each of them in order to get the value. So let me just show an example um, and then I'll copy and paste the full thing in here. So I could sum the values and this supports a filter. And I can say word direction equals up, for example, um, as up uh, and then from the inputs. So this gives me the total sum of all the ups, which actually there's only one, so it's a little boring. But if I do this manually for each enum, I could get the full uh, sum of all of them. Okay, so here's the uh, subquery copied from the solution where I take the sum of each forward, down, and up direction, uh, and then over, you know, filtered over, and now I have the sum of the forward, downs, and ups. So this is already our answer for the forward 15. It's already our answer for the x. And then now we just need down minus up. Um, so this is pretty simple if I already have this table because now I could just select you know, forward and then down minus up. And then uh, that'll give me the x, y position. So we can see that here. I have the movement uh, table that we just pasted in here in order to get the total sum of forward, down, and up. Then I could get my position, which I create as a new table in here by just taking forward as the X position and down minus up as Y. So now I have X minus Y, and then the answer is just X times Y. So if I wrap this in another uh, common table expression, then I could just multiply them. And here's the final result. So here's the first movement that we did. 
um, we get the uh, sum movements, then we get the position, and then using the position, we get x, y, and x times y is the answer. I include x, y just so we could see where we got it from, uh, and 150 is the answer for the sample problem. And if we load in the real input, we get the real input's answer, and we finish part one. Part two changes the problem by keeping the same input, but instead of simply summing the results, you have to sort of keep track of what they call an aim at each point. So when you go down and up, it actually doesn't change your depth anymore. It now increases or decreases your aim. And now when you go forward, this still does the same thing to your x position, but your depth is now calculated uh, by taking your accumulated aim and multiplying it by your forward movement x. Um, so this is a lot trickier because if we go back, this is a lot trickier because uh, before we could just sum all of these in any order we wanted and then eventually get the correct results. But now we sort of have to accumulate what our aim is at each point in time. So the first thing I did with this result was accumulate the uh, downs and ups for each point in time. So here's the query I used to do that. So what I'm trying to do is, if you if you ignore the down accumulation and up accumulation columns, it's just the inputs. I'm trying to annotate the inputs with the accumulated down and up directions at that point, um, because my thinking is that could give me the aim uh, at any given point by simply taking uh, the down minus up, uh, the depth at any given point. So to do that, I select all the things from our inputs, but then I add two new columns, which are named down accumulation, up accumulation. Um, and this is the sum of the values up to that point where the direction was down over all the preceding rows. So this is, again, a window function. And by using the uh, over with rows between here, uh, we could actually just sum the previous rows. So looking down here, you can see at this point we go down 5. So our total we've ever gone down 5 is uh, it, it gone down is 5. Uh, and if we go over down eight, the total we've ever gone down at this point is 13, but we keep that 13. When we go forward, we know that we've gone down 13. And then I do the same thing for up. And it's possible for this to be null if there's no value. So I use a coalesce, which just returns the first non-null value, whether it's the sum or the zero. So that fills these in with zeros. Otherwise, these would be null. And I wanted these to always be integers. So this gives us this um, accumulation at that point. And I use that in order to calculate the aim. And here's the aim function, so or query. So this is that query we had before in order to augment the inputs with the accumulated down, accumulated up. Now we could get the aim by simply taking the uh, same fields of the inputs, the ID direction value. Again, this is just the inputs table. And then changing those two to the current aim, which is the accumulated down minus accumulated up. And then the actual delta and depth that we would have because uh, we're looking only at forward values and the de the problems the problem set states that the depth changes by the forward movement multiplied by the aim. So you can see here we're filtering only forward movements. We now have 5, aim 0, we haven't moved depth at all. If our aim is 5 when we move forward 8, we've now gone down another 40, uh, etc. And so we filter by forward and so now this problem's a lot simpler. At this point, <clears throat> at this point, the answer is almost clear. Uh, to figure out your total x position, we just sum all these values because we're only looking forward. And to figure out our total y position or depth, we can now sum all the depth deltas. And here is that put together. So the movement and the aim is the same as the previous. And now we could calculate our final position by taking, as I said, the sum of values uh, as the x, and then the sum of the depth deltas as the y. And then the answer is x times y, which we need one more query because we can't reference uh, new fields uh, directly in a single query. And here's the final uh, answer query that gives us the actual answer. So everything up to this point, including position as a separate uh, subquery. And then we now select x, y, x times y. So the answer is just this last one, and x and y is shown uh, just to, to see where we got that from. And if we run the final script that has the both those queries, we could see part one, the answer is this, and this is what it calculated against the real input. And part two, uh, the answer is this, that it calculated against the real inputs. And both of these uh, were correct.